these are some of the tools we'll be using. A cutter, metal, metallic ruler, sandpaper mounted on a block of wood. So they, as I sandpaper the balsa wood, it can give me a flat surface. This is very useful for thinning the wood to require thickness. A plan. There are many glider plans that we can download easily from the internet. And in this case, I'll be making this design. It's called Big Poker Mark III. And uh, following the plan, I have already marked on my balsa wood, a thick balsa wood that is about 1 over 8 of an inch and the thinner one that is the 1 over 32 and I have put them together, aligned them and uh, used super glue to combine the two pieces together and the glue that I have been using very often is called ZEP but the only problem is that the tip is always clogged so I will need to use a drill every now and then to clear the tip and this is the fiberglass body that I'll be using and this piece is called a carbon fiber tube the reason is because inside is hollow inside is hollow and this is squarish so that when it is mounted onto the components the parts will, will not roll right I'll explain a little bit further now what I'll do next is to cut out the edges the necessary components before I send paper to thin it down and you notice the front of the wing is made of C grain because I will need the strength as for A grain is at the back so that it can be molded how to mold it is I will soak the second half with water later and then it can be bent easily but not so much for C grain C grain we use it mainly because of the strength I have just cut out the extra parts of the wing as you can see these are the loose portions now the next step for me is to use the sandpaper block to thin down the wood to require thickness and in this case I will create the aerofoil effect as well What I'm working on is the under side of the main wing. So I have already worked almost there, almost there, and then in the process there will be a lot of sawdust generated. So it's advisable to have newspaper put on the table so that it will be easier for cleaning up afterwards. For those of you that are sensitive to sawdust or powder in the air, it will be advisable to wear a mask. After working on this for an hour, this surface is almost flat. So after this, I can proceed to adjust the finer edges of the aerofoil effect. The sanding of the wing is almost done on both sides. Now it's the time to check the edge. Is it thin enough or not? Now let's see. Can you see from here? See the edge? Okay. It's uniform. And it will produce a natural curve down. So when it curves down, well, 
in order not to fight the nature naturally what you can see here it generates it produces a natural aerofoil curvature the top and the bottom so what I need to work on next will be the front edge this is this box is made of cardboard or, or cartons packaging and it's very good for me to work on because as I use sandpaper to work on the surface it will not I don't have to work, worry about this, uh, anything harm, harmful to the tabletop and in fact I can even work at an angle to the block at an angle slanting to the block for example the front edge over here has been worked on already now I will continue to work on the other half that is flat currently this is done so when I use sandpaper I will go this way well finally the main wing is ready let's take a look what about the aerofoil surface now focus on the front edge and this is the cross section All right the front arrow for effect and then it will the A grain would naturally curves down this is the underside of it and it's more or less flat but notice that the edge is not the edge in front is not entirely flat it's not entirely flat it will curve a little bit up here that means besides using sandpaper on top I also need to use the sandpaper slightly under, under the front edge alright to make the job complete and there you are C grain in front A grain at the back and A grain will tend to curve itself easier so in this case I may not even need to use water to soften it and curve it and set it will save me time and the left and right sides are flat which is very rare is to prepare for two flat surfaces up to reduce turbulence just like what you can find in commercial airlines nowadays and this was the line that I marked earlier the more or less the center line but not entirely in the center because the right side has got 2% length longer than the left side 2% on the right side so in this case it's 11 and a quarter inches whereas for the left side is exactly 11 inches so the quarter of an inch represents about 2% of the wing which will allow it to fly to its left naturally otherwise when it comes to airplanes this size it will be very hard for them to change direction they will, if left and right sides are the same they will tend to go straight and that means every time after you have launched the plane you will need to walk towards it to retrieve it and it's going to be very tiring so in this case it's meant for flying in circles and the convention currently is towards the left that's why the right wing has to be longer a bit I have wet the a green portion here of the main wing and it is for molding the wood upwards and you notice I've wet both sides that means this is underside and this is the top portion and it's darker in color because it is now wet with water the water content is a bit high here so afterwards I will need to make sure that this portion is flat so I will press something heavy against this portion and let it set for about 30 minutes while facing it it will be the fan and the fan will be blown full blast here to dry it an alternative is to use a hair dryer but it's going to be very noisy and hot it's not, it's not necessary that way and what have we got here this will be the this outline of the tail wing for cutting is sea green wood here for its strength and this will be the portion that I'll be using for the rudder 
So this is about six over inches long, and then this rudder is about one point five inches wide here. Hooks are put on top of the A grain section of the main wing to mold the wing. Notice we are looking at the underside of the main wing. It is curving upwards like this. It is curving like this upwards. This is the rudder that was cut out. And uh, don't worry much about the edge. You can still work on it by using sandpaper. And this is the rudder. At the bottom, you notice, because I was cutting against the grain of the wood, so it chipped a bit. So what I will need to do is either to use a very sharp razor blade or to use sandpaper block, a block of sandpaper, okay, to um, straighten the edge here. And this will be the bottom of the rudder. The edges of the rudder and the tail wing have been uh, smoothened by sandpaper. By now, the rudder and the tail wing had been thinned down from 1 over 30 seconds of an inch. So it's probably 1 over 64 by now. But it cannot be too thin, otherwise it will, be, it will start to warp. I'm now creating the pylon to connect the main wing to the fiberglass body. To cut along the grain of wood is easy, but if I am to cut perpendicular to the grain of wood, in order to avoid chipping, I will need to use a very sharp stainless steel blade, like this one. But you have to be careful because it is sharp at both ends. Now I am working on the pylon. Create a strip of wood, the best is probably a squarish uh, rod, long enough for the width of the main wing. And you cut carefully using the carbon fiber tube as a guide. Since it's squarish, it can sit on the edge nicely and cut along it carefully. There you are. And afterwards, create a groove out of it so that the carbon fiber tube can stay in it nicely. Based on the two lines cut along the strip of wood. The next step is to carve up a V-shaped structure out of it and then use the carbon fiber rod to work out the actual shape so that it can fit in. This is a strip of wood of the, uh, that belongs to the pylon and the V-shaped groove has been cut. So this is the time to remove it. As compared with the carbon fiber tube, which is squarish, it just cannot fit inside. So what we need to do next is to make use of the carbon fiber tube. It's actually very hard to work its way by pushing it, pushing, 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 push many times until it can fit in. Right, so you know, you notice tiny bits of wood will be extracted and it is done according to the shape of the carbon fiber tube. After two working on it for two minutes, I have created a slot that fits in the carbon fiber tube just nicely. Why is it so? Because the groove was actually made by the carbon fiber tube. That's why. That's how the groove looks like. The next step is to glue the two components of the pylon together, like this. After putting super glue by the edge of the pylon, I have managed to glue the first strip of wood to the remaining parts. Now, after I, I cannot smoothen the hole now because the glue is still a not set yet. So after waiting for about uh, 30 over seconds, I can begin to 
put the carbon fiber tube into the work with a hole like this push in and out a few times and I need to make sure that the carbon fiber tube is moving inside leaving no chance for it to be glued permanently how to create a dihedral main wing well there are a few options one option is to create two halves of the main wing and then you fuse them together but well that's maybe a bit of problem securing the both sides so normally what I would do is I cut the A grain open because once they are folded I need to make sure that I allow the aerofoil effect to take place so this part normally will not come together and I will need to remove a bit of the wood here so as to allow the two pieces to fold to give me the dihedral angle like this and both sides will need to be about two and a half inches be lifted on top of the table right let's do it I have created a groove in the center making use of a cutter and uh, small files so that it is able I'm able to fold the two halves and in this case I'm still working with just one piece of main wing it's easier to work as compared to two separate pieces then it, I don't have to in this case I don't have to worry about alignment and on my left and right side there are two st stacks of name cards and then the height of the name cards will come to 2.5 inches as indicated in the plan so I'm ready to glue the halves of the wings together so what I need to do is to pack the wing in between the two stacks of name cards that will give me 2.5 cm 2.5 sorry 2.5 inches in height and as I press down the, the main body there I have a, a hinge that is already fixed and I can put super glue on top and let it set super glue has been applied and it is important not to have your structure stuck onto the tabletop that's why every time I apply super glue I always have a plastic bag cover to prevent the glue from sticking with onto the wings my next step is to create a pylon that can fit very well with the main wing I have just applied super glue between the main wing and the pylon now I need to have some time to set notice the square hole that uh, I drew it earlier it should be at the lower end of the pylon I'm creating a uh, re uh, reinforcement piece for the finger grip that is on the right side of the underneath of the main wing after applying glue onto the reinforcement I need to work out the triangle notch into a semicircle so that it can fit my index finger I have just done that with a round file now align the body together with equal halves of the tail wing and apply super glue look that at the base underneath the tail wing I have put a plastic sheet underneath so that the 
tail wing will not be glued onto the mat. This is followed by the rudder. Notice that I have prepared an, uh, an offset of about 1 to 2 millimeters so that it will assist the airplane to turn left. The next stage is to glue the tip edge on the left side and the right side. It can be tricky because the tip edges will need to be vertical as shown on the floor plan. Here and here. The next step is to estimate how much of clay or blue tag do I need to put at the nose to have a good balance. And note that the main wing's position may be shifted in the process. So in this case, let us find out how much of blue tag do we need. Okay, we need about one gram of weight to be added to the nose. I will then create a new nose making use of base wood which is heavier to make up to the one gram that I need on the tip of the airplane. Finally, the nose is constructed with base wood in front which can be attached to the body while the main wing also can be detached for easy storage. So this indoor glider is actually therefore made up of three components the nose, the body and the main wing. That's how it looks like.